question is, how you running? All right, this week we've got kind of a different Where Are They Now. We've been doing the Where Are They Nows with professional poker players. This week we've got David Fishman, who played the Poker Stars uh, big game. And he has a big hand that he went through before. But uh, David, how you how you doing? I'm doing great, Joe. Thanks for uh, having, having me on here. Absolutely. So the reason I wanted to bring you on is because this hand, every time you pull up YouTube, it seems like it's it's there. And we were just talking about it. it's been 13 years ago now, right? Yes. Yeah. Summer of 2010, when we filled when we uh, when we played the game when we filmed the show. Uh, yeah. I think it aired in December of that year. Yeah. For those of you guys that don't know, Poker Stars had a show. It was called The Big Game. And they would bring an amateur on and they would play against poker pros. And the one that won the most money at the end of the season got, uh, what was it called? A platinum pass or a Oh. It's called the NAPT Passport for the North American Poker Tour. You got entry into four tournaments across North America uh, if you were the highest earning amateur at the end of, I think, 10 episodes. And you were the leader right up until the last day, right? The last one uh, squeaked it squeaked it out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, the, the hand that I was referring to that keeps coming up is this hand against Phil Helmuth. And I want to go through it, and I want to see how much one that you remember during the hand, and you know, as far as your thought process and things like that was, and then just kind of talk about how things went afterward. Did you stay in touch with anybody and things like that? So let's go through the hand first. Sure. You start no. with king queen of suited, right? Correct. King queen clubs. Yep. <clears throat> And and I think Phil ended up having ace five. Yeah, Helmut has ace five. I mean, pretty pretty simple call there, right? But and then on the flop, what 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 were you thinking on the flop? What happened here? Do you remember any of that? Well, the flop came down. Oh, was it? I'm looking at the video myself to remind me because, like you said, 13 years ago, <laughs> I, I have definitely some distinct memories, but a lot of them have come just from kind of rewatching the video myself over the, over the years. Um, but the flop, yeah, the flop came ace jack two uh, with two clubs. So now I have um, the ace king queen jack. So I'm four to the straight uh, gut shot. I need the ten, and I'm also four to the flush. Uh, right. So so you're not going in. <laughs> I think. Uh, let's see if uh, David Williams was also in the hand to start. So uh, David and Helmuth checked. Uh, and then so I bet out with the, you know, the semi bluff uh, with the flush draw, the straight draw. Uh, David folded and then Phil re raised over me. And that was a job. not much. I think it was a minimum raise. And then uh, I just quick, quickly called that one. Did you did you put him on a big hand at this point or no? Um, I figured he probably had the pair. You know, the aces were likely. Um, but I was just kind of just knowing that my hand was either going to hit or not. You know, it doesn't right, really right. matter yeah. what he had at that point. Um, it, you know, it all came down to whether or not I was going to, you know, catch my hand. Um, I think the turn then came the five. So he ended up getting two pair on the turn and he let out immediately with a big bet um, on that. And that was the first time I think I, I, I tanked for a little bit on that one. Um, and. I do remember that I was, I was kind of running the numbers in my head at that point. And the size of the bet, I wasn't sure if I was going to call. I mean, I still had a lot of outs to go. But I think ultimately what, what made up my mind to make the call there was the thought of if I hit the club, cool, I'm going to win the pot and it's probably not going to go any further. But if I somehow catch the straight, I don't think Phil would put me on that. And maybe I can get a lot more money out of him. Yeah. And I had already been up at that point. I think we were about 90 to 100 hands in. The way the game was run, it was it was 150 set hands that we had to play over the session. Oh, okay. So it was going to be 150 total hands no matter what. And we were right around the two-third mark, and I was up. I was actually up around 30,000, I think, something like that at that point. So 
40, somewhere around there. I don't remember that. Twenty, thirty thousand dollars. So I figured well, he let out fifteen thousand. I just looked back at the video and saw that. So at that point, I figure my final decision was if I call this and I don't catch, you know, I'm still right around my starting stack, a little below, and I still have fifty more hands to make something happen here. This once in a lifetime opportunity, you know, as, a, as an amateur player in the situation. Uh, and if I do catch something, you know, big could happen. So, so that's why I ended up calling um, after the turn. Right, and then the river comes out, the best card that it could possibly be. Absolutely. Right. Uh, <laughs> so when when the ten comes out, Helmuth actually leads out. It looks like. Yep. Twenty three six. Yeah. And <laughs> then the acting starts. Right. <laughs> Twenty-three thousand six hundred to a forty-five thousand dollar pot. This is pretty dirty. Fishman's reverse peddling the nuts. Clearly, he's going to raise. The only question is how much, and can he get Phil to call? I'm not going to let you do this to me again, Phil. I can't let you do this to me again. Leonardo DiCaprio could not be selling this any better. How much you got behind me? So, this, this hand for a long time. You know, it was stood in a vacuum when it was first came up on YouTube. I remember when it first came out, you know, and, and the people were watching it who I didn't watch the actual show. Was there an answer to that, that hand was standing in a vacuum, and I got – I read the comments. I did back then. Of course you have to. Right. And um, there were people who, like, who loved my play. There were so many people who like, he totally overacted that. I cannot believe Phil Helm, you've called this. Um, and in a vacuum, definitely. I, I kind of way, way hammed that up way too much. <laughs> but the hand was actually only two or three hands after another hand that I had played directly against Phil. We were heads up in another hand, just about two or three hands before that, which didn't get as much uh, YouTube uh, <laughs> play at the time, where it was the same thing, where he let out big after the turn, and I had a top pair. Turned out he had uh, trips, which so he had me crushed. But I did a whole talking spiel at that point as well, about how I feel like he's pushing me around and trying to bully me, and I want to just push all in over him, and I ultimately laid that down. Right. So that was kind of what spurred the, I'm not going to let you do this to me again, Phil, because it was just like two or three hands after he had, I just made it seem like he had been bullying me around. <laughs> uh, so I think that, that I allowed that to kind of play in, but in, in a vacuum, it may not, without the context, it may not show that that's what I was kind of building off of. I was building off of that hand that happened just a couple of hands. Are, are, is there ever a thought there where you're like, do I need to raise all in? Do I, or should I just min raise? Or no, um, I think in my mind at that point, I was so just trying to control the emotions <laughs> yeah. and not, I was trying to play into the, 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 you know, the, the story I had already built up, you know, right, with, with right. that previous hand. So at that point, bet sizing was not in my mind. I wasn't thinking about it. All. I knew I was going to go all in. It was just a matter of, of, of telling, trying to tell the story the way I thought it needed to be told before I made yeah. that push. Yeah. Um, mainly because, like I said, the three hands before I even said, I, I'm going to shove on you, Phil. I just want to push in, all, you know, and then I didn't. <laughs> so I, and it was going to be that or nothing, obviously. It was going to be that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, without watching the video, I have zero actual memory of what happened after I pushed all in. I really, really don't have <laughs> I got it blacked out at that point. And you got king, queen of clubs? I mean, I guess so. And then he calls, he actually calls your hand. He did. Yeah. It was outstanding. And that's when I think my, my, my hand started shaking, right? If yeah. you watch the video. Yeah. He called my hand, my, my hand shook for a second, and I physically, I, actually, I do remember stopping it and then thinking no wait i shouldn't stop there it and i started it, yeah. it again intentionally not knowing what was the right one to do but <laughs> <laughs> that's great so you intentionally you stopped it and then made yourself do it again yeah oh I wow remember that yeah i figured if i stopped it there it would give something away and i figured i just i need to need i started shaking i just need to go with it and i think that was my mindset at the time. and then he goes <laughs> If a club comes, I don't lose one nickel in the sand. What a pot for fish. <laughs> this is the this is the best part. Right? Nine, when eight, Bill Helmuth goes seven, on his rant, right? But then, I mean, what the they when he comes I mean, back to the table, and I mean, Bill Perkins says, like "You have I mean, truck loads of money." <laughs> That's my favorite part of this video. It's endless trunks of money. He's a yeah. school teacher, for God's sakes, man. I will never forget that line. Let me tell you. <laughs>
<laughs> Bill, Bill was a, a, a really nice guy too. He was not a pro, so there was another technically amateur at the table. Uh, but uh, true. But but he plays with the pros on a regular basis. On, yeah, that's pretty true. active player. Yeah. That's true. You know what? I would have called him quicker, except he, he talked so much that I thought he was super strong. But I know he can't move in with Ace-10. That was a great read, by the way. You had him. Yeah, You're a real classy guy, buddy. You are. Who? Him? You. Why? What did I do? Why would you say that? I mean, why would you? Why would you? I mean, what are you trying to do? You, the guy hits a miracle 10 on me, and what, you want to just step He's on me? He's a school me? teacher, and you and him have endless trunks of money. <laughs> endless trunks of money. He's a school teacher. For God's sakes, man. Screaming will do you a lot of good. Yeah. But then later on, and, and I didn't put the video, this video up here, but later on, you said at one point, if I get aces, I'll probably just fold them. Yeah. Because, uh, and, and then you got aces, yeah. and you actually folded them. And yeah. it turned out that it would have worked <laughs> out in your favor because I don't remember what the, the hand worked out to be. No, actually, Phil Locke uh, was at the table as well, and Phil Locke flopped quad sixes. That's what it was, yeah, yeah. And yes. so you would have lost a lot of money on that, or a lot of chips you, on that hand for sure. You know, the one thing, again, I, you, know, you watch the, I rewatch the videos, I reread comments years later, and people are talking about, well, obviously, if he just shoved pre-flop with the aces, no way Phil would have called with the pocket sixes. Uh, but, there was, but the format of the game was actually really interesting. It was a pot limit pre-flop. Uh, because oh. of the amateur, what, what we they called all the amateur players loose cannons, and right. because of the nature of their playing without risk, without you know playing with someone else's money, so who knows what they're capable of doing? So they set up this pot limit pre-flop just so the loose cannon can't just push all in every hand and be you know that crazy. <laughs> um, so there was no way I was going to get Phil off that hand at that point, most likely because of the pot limit uh, right. pre-flop. That's interesting. You know, that's not something that is ever talked about that it's pot limit pre-flop and with that dynamic then you're right there's nothing there's nothing that's getting them off that hand i'm sure right most likely not at that stage of the game yeah. so fast forward the the end of the show did you talk to phil did you talk to bill perkins or anybody after the show and yeah well actually you... phil um because after my the, that big hand uh with phil Homuth. It, it really crippled his stack. Uh, it was a cash game, but after he lost uh, two hands later, he lost the rest of his chips. He did not buy back in. And at that stage, he came over and gave me a big hug. He, he was really, really gracious to me. Um, cool. he, he congratulated me on my play. Uh, really, he, he was great. Uh, he was really nice to me. And then that was the last. Then he took off. He was done with, um, with the show at that point. So I didn't see him when everything was said and done. We just got right back to playing after he walked out. I think it was a... Uh, Jason Mercier came in from the green room and replaced him at the table. So, so yeah, but he, but he was. Phil was really, really gracious to me in, in those few minutes after he left the show. After the whole thing was finished, yeah, everybody congratulated me for a couple of minutes and then kind of went their own way. I had to stay behind because the producers needed to talk with me about a few things. Um, Bill Perkins was a, was, a, was a really nice guy. He talked to me probably. I probably talked to him more than anybody else while there. Uh, we did keep in touch for a little bit, about a year or so after the show, but then he kind of connected after that but um and then well and you you actually came back right because uh you made it like we said you made it to the last episode right and so it was either going to be you or the other loose cannon and i'm trying to remember the other gentleman's name that ended up winning but he was i remember he was a bus bus driver that's right Bo bobby the bus bobby the yeah. bus ferdinand <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know. So yeah, he ended up winning the the passport. I don't know how he did with it. I hope he did well with it. But yeah, he yeah. ended up catching an insane hand with about in his session, the hundred fifty hand session. He was down. He was in, he was down almost his entire session. And they had me on the show, ready for either me or him to be crowned as champion. And um, I think with the with like about fifteen hands left, he doubled up with a straight flush. That got him into a position where he could potentially catch me with a one more double up. And then with five, literally five hands left in his session, he got aces over kings. I think it was Peter Jetton was at the table, had kings, and he and, and Bobby had aces, and he, he got Jetton to call them all in, and he doubled up with five hands to go to pass me for the, uh, for the big grand prize. Yeah. Wow. Well, so then it's all over. You come back to normal life, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. Pretty much. Um, 
and, and you said you're not playing much poker now, but did you play much after the after that? No, I, I never really. I mean, I was, it was I was a player. I enjoyed playing poker my whole life, but I was never considered myself a gambler. Right. So um, I played small stakes. I played for fun. I played online when it was allowed out in Arizona, and that's kind of how I qualified for the show. Was actually through online tournaments and whatnot. But yeah, when I came back at that point, it wasn't long after that they shut down the online forum, and there's still a lot of uh, casinos in the Phoenix area. But um, I would go every once in a while, but it wasn't a common occurrence before or after, really, for me. So you were teaching at the time. You were at Arizona State, right? Correct. Teaching, and you left for a while, but now you're back at Arizona State, correct? Yeah. So that was the big change that actually happened after the show ended. Um, was at that point I had been working at Arizona State uh, as an instructor for seven years, and um, there were there were some high, you know, financial issues, hiring issues, and I wasn't getting a promotion that I felt I, I I had earned at that point. And my father, who runs a business back in New York, ran a business back in New York, had been asking me for many years to um, come join him in the family business. So. With the winnings from the show and everything that kind of changed, I decided maybe it's time for a change. So I did. I actually did leave teaching to go to New York and get into the family business for four years with my dad, which was just a really cool experience. And having this uh, this money helped uh, helped me get a, a home in, in New York and, and, and make that transition. And I found out that after four years, I really, really love my father, but I really, really hate working with him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, and uh, teaching had always called to me, and I missed it. And uh, my wife wasn't loving it in New York, and she missed her job and teaching. She's also an elementary school teacher. And uh, in 2015, she got offered her old job back in in Arizona. And uh, interesting enough, it wasn't long ago, so I reached out to ASU and I said, "If you guys take me back," and they said, "And I, as long as I get that promotion," and they said, "Yes." <laughs> And they brought nice. me back at a higher position, which is what I've been wanting all along anyway. So it worked out ultimately in the long run. So now I've been at ASU, back at ASU for eight years. Yeah, That's awesome. Well, I'm glad all of that worked out the way it was supposed to, right? And yeah. then, and you get to enjoy poker as entertainment. I think so many people would, would take that and be like, well, I'm the greatest. The, the WSOP is not that far for me, and I always feel like it will happen at some point. So, it, I, you know, I'll, I'll take a drive up to Vegas one summer. Maybe, you know, the kids are, my kids are now, so when I was on that show, my kids were two. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> my kids are in high school now. In a few years, uh, they'll be out of the house, and I can see myself uh, making my way up to Vegas one summer just to try the World Series. I, I uh, think that would be the, the story of the summer. The oh, yeah? <laughs> it, it, how great would it be if you got – to the World Series of Poker, and we're at the table with Bill Hummel. <laughs> that would be great. That, no, would, I, that, that would be the story. I would love it. I would yeah. love it. Well, I really appreciate you coming on here and, and talking, going through this with me. You know, like I said, we've been doing this, this Where Are They Now series uh, for a few weeks now, and uh, it only seemed right to do this one so I'm, I'm super glad that you were willing to jump on here and i think it was fun i appreciate it joe thanks yeah it's, yeah. Uh, it's fun to talk about it. i think i mean i actually re-watch the video regularly because I, one of the classes i teach at asu is a probability and statistics class so i actually use that hand to you know talk about pot odds or you know uh, expected value and things like that in my class so it's fun I, I, how many I feel- when you do that how many people had already seen the video I've been recognized on campus over the years. Uh, they, students will, seem to always know me. They see the video here and there. Uh, lately, I think it's been reposted, so that it's been more common. Like you said, it's coming up on YouTube a lot more often now. So students seem to have uh, uh, you know, seen it before, but there's always a, a large contingent who haven't. And when they see that video, they're like, that's not you. What? <laughs> that's crazy. And then they tell their friends, and then the next semester, more students. Some will know me, some won't. A lot of students, I think, take my class just because I was in that video. You know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I do get recognized still on campus quite a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's great, uh, and that's fun. I mean, it, it's still fun, even if it's not. I mean, obviously, it's not what you're looking for, but it's still fun. <laughs> oh, it's a, yeah. <laughs> well, I. 
thank you so much for joining me and uh, stay in touch. If you make that, if you make that trip down to uh, Vegas and play in the, the series, let us know. Absolutely. All right. Thanks, Joe. Have a great one. You too.